Welcome to our presentation on useful tips and tricks for MTD. We will be covering a troubleshooting tools used to investigate MTD issues. Looking ahead to the agenda, the troubleshooting tools we will be covering include the Sage RR Syracuse debug logs, as well as the last calls, and how this information is stored in MongoDB. There will also be a short demo on what to look out for on the last calls when making a successful submission before we go over the relevant Syracuse version and patch requirements for the equivalent version of X3. So let's start with the troubleshooting tools and more specifically Sage RR Syracuse logs in debug. A lot of you will know one of the main tools we use to analyze MTD problems are Sage RR Syracuse logs. We will be showing you how to set them up, how to retrieve them, and then finally, what you will need to look out for in the logs during your analysis. Okay, so how do we set them up? To trigger the logs, go to Administration, Administration, Settings, and Global Settings. In the Server Log section, modify the level for the Sage RR code. As can be seen in the screenshot, the level dictates how much information will be displayed in the log, increasing as you move down the list. Error shows the least, and silly shows the most. Set the level to debug. This will be sufficient for Sage RR and for the purposes of submitting a support case. After you have saved this change, proceed back to the VAT return function and attempt to complete your submission until you encounter your issue. This will be captured on the Sage RR Syracuse logs, which can be recovered from the server. If you are experiencing issues connecting to HMRC, while you are still in the global settings, it would be useful to turn the HTTP out to debug. This will provide more detailed information on the outbound calls logged when Syracuse makes HTTP callout to other services such as MTD. Once we've turned on the SageRR Syracuse logs, you can proceed with your VAT submission. Once you've attempted to complete your submission and have encountered an issue, you can go ahead and retrieve the logs for further information on what may be the cause of the problem. But where do we retrieve these logs from? First, you will need to connect to the Syracuse server, after which you can navigate to the Syracuse directory to retrieve the logs. This is illustrated in the folder path in our screenshot. Once you're here, you can proceed to sort the logs by the date modified to bring those logs most recently active to the top. Look for the logs ending in N1 or N0. Depending on the usage being distributed by the load balancer, you may need to take a copy of both files for analysis. Alternatively, you can determine this by running a simple search for Sage RR, and if it does not appear in the log, then that would suggest that the Sage RR bundle was not used on those dates on that node. Similarly, you can search for the HTTP reference in the logs. Once we have the correct logs, we can go ahead and try to identify the cause of the issue that was encountered. We would recommend you open up the log file in Notepad++. Start by checking for any unusual messages around the time of the issue using the timestamp. But be aware of the time difference between the server where the logs are produced and your local time, if this is different. Use the find functionality to search for keywords in all documents. Look out for references to words like error or SageRR or the actual error message you may have come across during your submission, such as error 401. For example, we search for error SageRR as can be seen in the screenshot at the bottom of the slide. This will be followed by information that may pertain to your issue. The other main troubleshooting tool we use here at Sage X3 is the Last Calls. The Last Calls recovers MongoDB information tracking interactions between Sage X3 and the HMRC API. This can be used to determine connection issues you may face during your VAT submission. In order to use it, we'll need to add the Last Calls command, as highlighted in green, to the end of your URL. In our example, we would add this after the port number located at the end of the IP address. This will allow us to collect information about the bundle, all recorded past and present communications, errors, and missing data. The result is displayed in the browser window. 
Save the displayed information in a PDF or text file for easier analysis. However, there are circumstances where you may need to clear the SageRR information in MongoDB, including the last calls. In order to do this, you can use the command as highlighted in green on the slide. As per before with the last calls command, you would add this to the end of the URL. Although we are telling you how to use this, we would highly recommend you consult Sage X3 customer services before making any decisions unless you are clearing all UAT test data before the go live. This will ensure you start with clean information after new Sage X3 installation. Warning, if there are VAT returns with the status different from completed, the RAS MongoDB command could corrupt the VAT returns and, for instance, make the completion impossible. In this demonstration, we're going to show you how the last calls are being generated as you progress, submit and complete your VAT return. As you can see on the right hand side, we've already added the Sage RR last calls command to the URL, where we will be monitoring the progress throughout the submission. Let's go to the VAT return function. Always click on New. Select your VAT form. A VAT entity. And the year you're submitting your VAT return for. For testing purposes, we are entering year 2017 to be able to communicate with HMRC test platform. Please note, pop-ups should be enabled on your browser. Next, to authenticate, enter your HMRC user and password. Top tip, never save your credentials if you are submitting for multiple companies. After granting the authority, you will return to VAT return and retrieve period information provided by HMRC. Click Create. Now you will refresh Last Calls Information. As you can see, we have the declaration number on top followed by our first call. It's given us the date and time, a unique session ID number, polling URL, which is used to create and check the period. Next, we have JSON, which is currently blank. We'll be explaining why a little later. Followed by the JSON retour, which is the information received by the Sage RR API that gives the URL to call in order to check the information with the HMRC. This will provide us with the callback instructions. Next, we have the JSON GET obligation, which provides us with the submission period information, the company VAT number, and the UUID company information. Finally, we have the JSON obligation. This tells us we have successfully established the connection with HMRC. You will also notice period key, which is an ID code for an obligation period, normally differentiated by length of the period, either monthly or quarterly. Note, this cannot be modified and is submitted to HMRC. Next, we will be extracting the values for VAT boxes. The log will be generated and you see no errors. You can also check VAT to declare tab making sure the values are correct, as well as detailed by the company. Once happy with the return, you can proceed with validation. But note, after this step, no adjustments can be made. Once validation is complete, submit that return to HMRC. It may take some time to get the response back from HMRC. Do not refresh your page. 
the status would have now changed to submitted. Let's refresh our last calls. As you can see, there is now a new call. The polling URL is now blank and instead JSON information containing VAT return data is now populated. We have the declaration number populated, the same period key as before, company name, VAT number, MTD key number, and the VAT return values. JSON Retour contains header information, which is now collecting extra information to be provided to HMRC, used in fraud prevention such as session ID and location information. The most important thing is that it confirms that we are awaiting for a response from HMRC, and the phase is currently submitting VAT return. Status code is 202 meaning that the return has been accepted. After a while, you'll get the response back from HMRC. Let's check the status back in X3, which is now changed to completed. Let's go back to our last calls and hit the refresh. The call is now updated with JSON retour status, changing from in progress to success. We now can see a form bundle number and the payment indicator. Status code is now 200, meaning the submission was success and it has a receipt time stamp and ID. All the information presented in last calls is vital in investigating all the issues you may encounter during your submission, which is why it is critical you do not clear MongoDB data. This is the example of the information that will be lost if you do this. To avoid any confusion, so this isn't done by mistake, I'm going to now show you the steps. Add Mongo RASDB command to the URL. This will ask me to leave the site. You'll get the status that the Sage RR rows have been deleted. When you refresh the last calls, as you can see, we lost all the information about all last calls for VAT returns generated previously. Note, this could cause an issue for all incomplete VAT returns on Sage X3 and impede the ability to investigate the problems. In other troubleshooting guidance, you should always check your Syracuse level is up to date for your X3 version and patch number. While installing or upgrading your X3, you should have prerequisites for Syracuse versions, but we always recommend that you go on to the latest version of Syracuse once available. In this table, you can see the latest Syracuse version is 12.12.051, and this will be the latest recommended level for version 12. Note from the previous Syracuse version 12.11.2.2, the MTD update for July 2021 is already included. This was for the MTD had the changes that became a requirement by HMRC to increase security and fraud prevention. Accordingly, we have a similar recommendation for version 11, whereby for patch 20, you should be on Syracuse version 1127. However, for all other patch levels, you should currently be on version 1126. Note, both of these versions fulfill the HMRC had a change requirement. Please be mindful that when upgrading Syracuse, there may be a requirement to upgrade other components, such as MongoDB, runtime, etc. For more information, we have included the URLs in the links highlighted in green. You can check them out yourselves as this information is available on Sage City. Thank you for your time. We hope you found our presentation useful.